everyone. This is Shweta Devgut welcoming you to the thorough newspaper analysis for the dates 18th and 19th January 2023. We get started with this very important editorial in the Hindu on admonishment that endangers the constitution followed by news updates as well as legal news. The Keshwanand Bharti judgment is about to cross the 50 years mark in April 2023. This judgment has played a crucial role in ensuring two things. One, the powers of the parliament to amend the constitution are not plenary. That is, they are not complete or absolute. And second, any change that could damage the basic structure of the constitution is void. Considering the debate about the appointment of judges via the collegium system, the validity of this judgment has come under scanner. A collegium is a body of senior judges that makes binding recommendations on the appointment and transfer of judges. In 2015, the National Judicial Appointments Commission, NJAC, a body created to replace the collegium, was stuck down. Concerns regarding the collegium have further raised issues regarding the legitimacy of the court's power to legislate on certain matters. The constitution, we all know, is a product of, the, of a collective vision. It comprises a set of principles that together lend an identity. This also forms the crux of the basic structure doctrine. This vision was built on distinct and interwoven ideals that India would be governed by a rule of law. No matter how high you are, the law is above you. That our structure of governance would rest on Westminster's parliamentarianism. That the powers of the legislature, the executive and the judiciary would be separate. That the courts would be independent of government and that our states would have absolute power over defined spheres of governance. In this light, this editorial reasons on a fundamental question of whether constitution should remain the same as it was adopted in 1950. The address of the German pr uh, professor, Dr. Conard, is relevant here to be pointed out. He mentioned that any amending body organized within the statutory scheme Howsoever verbally unlimited its power cannot by its very structure change the fundamental pillars supporting its constitutional authority. As the court would later explain in Minerva Mills versus Union of India, and incidentally at stake, there were very survival of the idea that fundamental rights are inviolable. Parliament too is a creature of the constitution. Hence, the parliament can only have powers that are expressly vested into it. In other words, the principle that parliament is proscribed from changing the constitution's essential features is rooted in the knowledge that the constitution, as originally adopted, was built on an intelligible moral foundation. Taken to the extreme while considering the statements that have been made by the vice president, the same could mean that the parliament could choose to abrogate its powers and establish a singular person as a dictator. Justice H.R. Khanna, who gave a dissenting opinion in the Keshwabhan Party case, also observed that the word amendment has to be construed only as a minor change or addition designed to approve a text and not as a plenary power. Now let's move on to the news updates. We have seen that Paytm Payments Bank receives approval from RBI as a BBPOU. What is a BBPOU? The Paytm Payments Bank Limited, PBBL, has got the final approval from Reserve Bank of India to operate as a Bharat Bill Payment Operating Unit, that is a BBPOU, under the Payment and Settlement Systems Act 2007. As an entity under the Bharat Bill Payment System, the BBPS, Paytm Payment Bank Limited Bank has got the final authorization to conduct bill payment and aggregation business as a BBPOU. The second news update talks about International Press Academy Award. The IPA announced the winners of the Special Achievement Award recipients for its 27th Annual Satellite Awards in Motion Picture and Television over this weekend. 
Bhavan Rabari won the Breakthrough Performance Award, while S.S. Rajmoli's period film RRR was given the Honorary Satellite Award. Bhavan Rabari, the lead child star of India's official entry for the Oscars, the cello show, and global blockbuster RRR, have been honored by the International Press Academy. Spick Meke Culture Ministry collaborate for Music in Park series under Shruti Amrut. The Society for the Promotion of Indian Classical Music and Culture amongst youth, that is Spick Meke, organized its very popular Music in the Park series this year under the name of Shruti Amrut in collaboration with the Ministry of Culture as well as New Delhi Municipal Cooperation. The beauty of Indian classic, classical music was showcased by eminent artists from across the country. The next news is about India's second largest market for Singapore tourism sector in 2022. India has been ranked the second largest tourist market for Singapore in 2022 behind Indonesia with 6,86,000 Indian arrivals according to the data provided by country's tourism authority. Tourists from Indonesia, India and Australia were amongst the top spenders in the first nine months of 2022 with a spending of 8.96 billion Singapore dollars. India was the second largest tourist market for Singapore in 2022. Indonesia was the largest market with 1.1 million uh, arrivals followed by Malaysia. The OP Jindal University establishes India's first research center on G20 studies. The OP Jindal Global Institution, which is an institution of eminence deemed to be university, Jindal Global University announces the establishment of Jindal Global Center for G20 Studies. This will be the first research center established by any Indian university, which will exclusively focus on research, thought leadership and capacity building initiatives relating to G20. The next news talks about Adani Ashok Leland to develop Asia's first hydrogen mining truck. Adani Group plans to develop and deploy hydrogen-powered trucks in partnership with Ashok Leland and Ballard Power. These hydrogen-powered mining trucks will weigh 55 tons, have three hyd hydrogen tanks, a 200-kilometer long working range, and be powered by Ballard's 120-kilowatt PEM fuel cell technology. The demonstration project will be led by AEL, a company focused on both mining operations and developing green hydrogen projects for sourcing, transporting, and building out hydrogen refueling infrastructure. India and UK to launch Young Professional Scheme. Marking a new chapter in the visa regime, India and UK will launch the much-awaited Young Professional Scheme on February 28, 2023. The announcement was made by Ministry of External Affairs following the conclusion of the 15th India-UK Foreign Office cons Consultation. Aimed at allowing increased mobility, the Young Professional Scheme signed by both nations allowed up to 3,000 Indian nationals per year in the age bracket of 18 to 30 to study and work in each other's countries for a period of two years. The scheme also aims to fo foster a long-term India-UK partnership by allowing young people to learn about each other's cultures. Bangkok Open Challenger title. The top-seeded Indian team of Yuki Bambri and Saket Maini came from behind to win the Bangkok Open title. They're six together on the ATP Challenger Tour as they, bit, as they beat Christopher Rungat and Akira Stanley. The 21st edition of Naval Exercise Varuna between India and France. The 21st edition of Bilateral Naval Exercise between India and France commenced on the Western Seaboard. Initiated in 1993, the exercise was Christian Varuna in 2001 and has become a hallmark of India-France strategic bilateral relationship. This edition of the exercise will witness participation of indigenous guided missile stealth destroyer INS Chennai, guided missile frigate INS Teg, maritime petrol aircraft P-8I, and Dornier integral helicopters and MiG-29K fighter aircraft. Mukarram Ja, Titler 8th Nizam of Hyderabad passes away. 
نظام میر برکت علی خان صدیقی مکرم جا آصف جا ایٹ لیس فارملی نون ایز مکرم جا واز دا ٹائٹل نظام آف حیدرآباد بٹوین نائنٹین سکسٹی سیون اینڈ نائنٹین سیونٹی ون ہی واز دا ہیڈ آف دا ہاؤس آف آصف جا انٹل ہز ڈیتھ ان ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی تھری ہی واز ایٹی نائن ایئرس آف ایج اینڈ ہی ہیز بین سروائو بائی ہز سکسیسر دیٹ از گرینڈ سن آف دا لاسٹ نظام آف DNPA announces Digital Impact Award 2023. The Digital News Publishers Association, DNPA, has announced the winners of E4M DNPA Digital Impact Awards 2023. The winners will be presented by the award on January 20, on 20th January at E4M DNPA Digital Conclave and Digital Impact Awards in New Delhi. The spot-bellied eagle owl spotted in Sheshachalam forest of Andhra Pradesh. A wildlife team recently has the good fortune of stumbling across a spot-bellied eagle owl in Sheshachalam forest in Andhra Pradesh. Previously, the bird was spotted in Sri Lanka. Coming on to the legal updates. In the case of Guddan, that is Roop Narayan versus state of Rajasthan, it has been held that excessive conditions cannot be imposed while granting bail or suspension of sentence by the Supreme Court. The conditions of bail cannot be so onerous that their existence itself tantamounts to refusal of the bail. The bench of Justice Krishna Murari and V. Ramasubramanian observed while setting aside conditions imposed by the Rajasthan High Court for suspension of sentence in a criminal appeal. In the case of State of India and others versus Kamal Kishore Prasad, it has been held by the Supreme Court that a person cannot be deemed to be in service when final dismissal order is in force. The Supreme Court bench comprising of Justice Krishna Murari and Bela M. Trivedi has held that when the first dismissal order against a person in service is in force, irrespective of all pending litigations or his age of superannuation, he cannot be deemed to be continuing in service. In the case of Jabir versus state of Uttarakhand, it has been held that last seen circumstance cannot be the sole basis for conviction. In this case, the Supreme Court observed that the court should not convict an accused only on the basis of the last seen circumstance while setting aside concurrent conviction of murder accused. The bench of Justice S. Ravindra Bhatt and P. S. Narasimha observed that the last seen doctrine has limited application where the time lag between the time of the deceased was seen last and the accused and the time of murder is narrow. Thank you, everyone. This was the thorough newspaper analysis for the day. Stay, stay tuned for more. Thank you.